I can also build on upon <coughs> what you said when it comes to regulators. Ultimately, you, you mentioned this as well, that a certain of time regulators and governments will step into the, mm -hmm. the arena as well for the simple reason that they need to protect the interests of their citizens, right? Yeah. And, and the best example of this is what is happening those days in Bangladesh, where, where they, the, Mr. Brahman, the, the so-called the green banker, the, the governor of the central bank has actually got, uh, uh, has reforced the, the banks to create a new payment system, a rural payment system for, for the people who do not have access to anything, with the only difference that the central bank will propose its guarantee to those deposits, mm -hmm. which is making a, a very strong difference to you know what is happening in other countries. So the central bank will be there really to protecting you know the interests mm -hmm. of citizens. Yeah. So you're concerned about risk. Let's tackle that um, about in in some of these countries where there's non-traditional players. Short of what is happening in Bangladesh, you're worried that some of these non-traditional players could be adding risk to to the system, particularly if there's I, I, a problem I'm, and and suddenly there's no regulation, there's no rules to, to really dictate what happens. For, for me, there are clearly risks that, that belongs to the, the sphere, right, which is about protecting the interests of the ones actually that have the deposit on bank accounts and all that. But you have also many of the risks that, that, that belongs to the way that those services will be proposed to the end customers, with the technology that stands behind this, uh, the networking side, uh, cyber crime. I mean, it's fine to take about, you know, to, uh, like we have 212 countries in the world and, and 11,000 institutions. But you need to make sure that all of that is actually mm -hmm. really secured, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you can read in the press, right? Go every day in the press, you see leakings, right? You see, you know, every other day, 30 million is there, 45 million is there that are being basically stolen by people that have a speciality, especially for coming from some countries to hacking and getting to the system. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, um, uh, if you're not proposing a, a system to the people that are, that, that, that is really, uh, secured from a protection protections point of view to the people, but also from a technology and access point of view, you're going to have some issues. Mm -hmm. So, But I would say that regulators... That sounds a bit like an argument of an incumbent, though. Well, let's say, <laughs> you know, without risk, there's no re reward, right? Sure. So ultimately, I think there may be another obligation for regulators, which is, are these new technologies, are these disruptions net positive for industry, for individuals, consumers? Yeah. And I think if we had the burden of not just protection, but of actually creating value, then I think we should see you know, some risk, managed risk, um, that can keep the robust or unfragile system in place, but has to let new, new opportunities emerge. That, I, I couldn't possibly disagree with that statement, but that debate will oscillate. Mm -hmm. There'll be moments in time, just like, you know, financial deregulation, derivative mm -hmm. deregulation, where everybody thinks distribution of risk is great and it's creating engines, you know, to power economies and leverage is safe because we're much smarter. We have, you know, great PhDs from MIT working on this stuff. <laughs> and then instantaneously overnight, you know, it's too big to fail, moral hazard, banks are too big, financial leverage is too concentrated, it's, it, and it's too, it's too concentrated on the one hand, it's too distributed on the other hand because we can't find it. So should we mediate the oscillation and try to make I, it smaller then? Or? He, well, I mean, look, I, I, atoms vibrate since the Big Bang, and I think the conversations <laughs> that are policy-driven will vibrate uh, you know, just as long as atoms vibrate. So I don't think that there's a, a way to stabilize that conversation. I think that there'll be some trial and error, but I, I think what I would argue for, and I think there seems to be like at least some part of the room that, that, that feels this way, is that as, <laughs> as these, as these interfer interfering technologies or, or new sticky ways to access financial services transaction start to look more like sources of financial risk, financial exposure, mm -hmm. um, that where governments might be expected implicitly to underwrite that risk over time, people are gonna start paying attention. And the moment you have a crisis, people are really gonna start paying attention. Yeah. So I, I don't think that it's yeah. impossible to foresee that. Arthur. Let me just give you a contra view. We tried to say whether we should apply for the new banking regulation, you know, new bank we were to apply for in India. And then we did this calculation saying I have to keep so much money for SLR, which is you know keeping money with the government and doing this. And for the next 10 years, we probably will make lesser money than we'll make as a, a non-NBFC that we are, a non-banking financial institution. Mm. So this is all is happening because of the regulation which wants to protect. If you overlay the regulations to all the people who are holding money and they are asked to prescribe to the same thing, then the attractiveness that is in terms of a financial standpoint will come down dramatically. Mm -hmm. Then the rubber will actually hit the road. Mm -hmm. And then they will say whether specialization wins the game in that era or it is going to be these people who will try to manage 
both the selling as well as keeping money intact so, is going to win. It's, it's going to be an important factor. And I, I think so far as the regulation is not there and only convenience is there, it's fine. But the moment you overlay regulation and they have to manage all that regulation, you know, which is one of the biggest uh, problems that any bank faces, how to manage these regulations mm -hmm. and be on the right side always. Mm -hmm. So I think so, I think it's an important consideration. That's a good point. Okay. Uh, well, well regu the, you're predicting this fight over regulation no, no, no. and more of it and won't it slow things down then? I have a, I have a new idea. Okay. <laughs> so maybe the regula regulators, governments uh, may or should uh, let banks do everything. Everything? Yeah, I mean, so far, you know, the, the regulator has been very protective, prote protecting banks so that the banks cannot do, you know, banks cannot do the, the merchandising or, you know, gaming, those kind of things. Let banks to do that, you know. To get the, into gaming. Gaming or, you know, <laughs> you know like, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, Amazon type of business, yeah. whatever, and the banks has the got banks to get bigger out. and bigger then. But, yeah, so that's another way to, you know, somehow balance the, right. the situation. So, right. so as Amazon so, so, brings the fight to the banks, then they should bring bank? it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, look, it's a little late to put new panelists on, but if we had a retailer, <laughs> if we had a tele telecom company, if we had a technology-oriented platform uh, representative here, my guess, I don't know, but my guess is that they don't necessarily want to be banks. They're thinking about offering financial services as a way to make their telecom or their device business much more attractive. Or they're thinking of yeah. financial access as a way to power their retail or their merchandise in the same way that, I mean, we represent financial entities here. I don't think any of us want to necessarily become telecom companies or become you know, merchandise, even if we had the opportunity. Because again, there's a natural skill set or core culture, your corporate culture and, and customer base that makes sense for us to you know, expand and, 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 and cultivate. Uh, and, but it may not be that smart, I mean, just as a, a for-profit enterprise to try to branch too far. But it's not only services. You know, the, uh, there are so much of uh, uh, settlements, payment, going, you know, happening in those, uh, you know, Amazon or those places. And they are paying, or their clients are paying a lot of fee to banks. So if they take all things Fair enough. inside, then, you know, they make, they make a lot of money. I think you're identifying the nature of convergence, <laughs> what's happening there. Yeah. I'd love there's, to... As one said, there's two ways to make money, bundling and unbundling. <laughs> I'd love to open up this discussion to the audience. If any of you have questions, we could go on. Um, Disagreement. <laughs> yes. Um, my name is Max Monty. I'm the Microphone, please. My question is actually, what do you see as the impact of virtual currencies on payments, such as Bitcoin and other? Do you see this as just a flash in the pan, or is this there to stay? Thank you. Anyone want to grab that? I, I would say um, I am a huge believer in cryptocurrencies, um, not just for transactions and not necessarily just Bitcoin, but I think the invention of the open uh, ledger with the uh, blockchain is fundamentally really technically exciting. And I think whether it is for transaction of value or whether it is for traceability of digital assets, I think this invention is going to affect in fact and affect financial services, not just on the transaction side uh, and, and the settlement side, but also on the capital formation side too. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, uh, you know, I do believe that Bitcoin and those kind of things are very good. Um, but again, the government will step in. For example, you know, uh, this is what I'm th uh, I think. The, the uh, US government, you know, the biggest uh, treasury, biggest government in, in the world, they do love greenbacks <laughs> that are cash. You know why? Those, you know, they, they print money, mm -hmm. and once those money go to the, uh, you know, weapon business or drug business, or wherever, those money will never come back to treasury. Mm -hmm. So it's like a debt equity, debt equity swap, it, yeah. right? So they, they issue paper as a debt, that now it, it will become equity. So if the digital cash take over the real cash, then the U.S. government cannot enjoy those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I believe 
the government, like U.S. government, and the big government will step in to somehow stop, uh, you know, to those uh, digital cash but, to become but too But so is it stop or regulate? So I think there's an opportunity to regulate this technology, as mm -hmm. is already happening in many jurisdictions, but I don't think you can stop it. Mm -hmm. I, China you, tried to stop it. Uh, actually, 70% of transaction volumes in Bitcoin's exchange are RMB denominated. Mm -hmm. So it's not being cool. stopped. Mm -hmm. So I, I, this is not an area of expertise at all, but you know, if I think in a parallel old-fashioned universe where if there's an independent Scotland, we don't even know exactly how to think intelligently <laughs> about what the currency implications are. I, I mean, at what, what does it mean for a currency that doesn't have a nation state or doesn't have a sort of sovereign sponsor and what, what are the implications there? And again, it goes back to this, the same thing. You know, when it gets important, people start to care. When people start to care, the discussion really begins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alan, but, how would SWIFT handle Bitcoin. I think I'm very much with, with, <laughs> with, uh, with you on this one. I think from a, from, a, from a design architecture point of view, I think the Bitcoin approach, whether you call it, you call it Bitcoin or something else, there, may, there, there would be others, by the way, I'm, I'm sure, using the, sort of, the same sort of uh, approach to market is a, is a good thing. Uh, but again, I mean, uh, I think the, the more it will be spread, spread over in different markets, the more the more regulators, uh, governments will, will start actually influencing this, or at least controlling what's the, the, the way it's being done. Mm -hmm. But frankly, if you look at the way it is done, it is a much more efficient way to dealing with currencies than right. the ones we have today, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the reality. If you look at the, from, a, from an architectural point of view, yep. it's much more efficient. Mm -hmm. and, no. and, and another irony is, you know, Bitcoin got a bad reputation because of Silk Road and illicit activities transacting with Bitcoin. Yeah. But fundamentally, with an open ledger, you could have nothing more transparent and traceable. Yeah, but then from there you'll get to all sorts of discussions about it. that's why government, governments will step in or regulators because you have all sorts of issues around national debts, about uh, sovereignty. Mm -hmm. I mean, currency is like uh, the, the one thing that states have. Huh? It's like I have the dollar, I have the euro, whatever, but that's something that I have. Mm -hmm. And that shows the strengths of your, of your country or your people. Mm -hmm. Part that Bitcoin yeah, in India, yeah. it could Bitcoin be the answer. In, yeah, <laughs> in terms of cost, what is the cost structure of a Bitcoin-like operations versus the hard currency method that we have? And if eventually productivity and the cost of transaction has to win over, Bitcoin has a place in the world. Yeah? Uh, and some of these will, will go through much as, you know, problems as you have defined because governments will try to hold. So I think of this not as a general uh, answer to everything but as a niche area uh, which will do in certain areas very well while government will try to kind of control bits of it, which it wants to still have the green, green bucks and feel their money in the hand. Mm -hmm. so, so I think mm -hmm. that will coexist, but there will be a place for uh, something like Bitcoin, even in India.